what's up? It's your boy, Adrian the Barber. Man, and excuse me, this Minnesota weather got me feeling a little sick, trying to get better. I got a trip to Cali this weekend. I got to get over this, man. But today, I got my boy Tone in the chair. We're doing a high ball taper. Um, you guys have seen him in a couple of my other videos I've did in the past. I've never done a full haircut tutorial with him yet, but um, we do the whole breakdown. I'm going to show you guys the lineup. I'm going to show you the enhancements, and I'm going to show you how to taper it out and, uh, and get the same exact style. So let's go ahead and get into this video. All right, now step one. Um, again, I'm gonna be watching this video with you guys, coaching you uh, along the way, um, going over the steps and everything I'm doing. Again, if you got any questions, make sure you hit me up in the comments, man. I'll be more than happy to answer those. Um, step one, as always, you see me doing all my videos, comb the hair down, brush the hair, um, and kind of find the pattern that the hair grows in so you can cut it in the right direction. So I'm starting off with my number one guard on my Andes Masters. Um, these are not Fade Masters. I have, I have the Fade Master plate on them, but they're, they're just regular improved masters. Um, so yeah, starting my number one guard, just, just trimming his hair down on top. And I picked him because he has kind of a tricky haircut, just for the fact that the way his hair grows, he has, uh, like in the back on his taper, you'll see when we get to that part, he, his hair grows in all different directions. So it's, it's a little bit more challenging than just any, uh, regular client. And then you'll see also on the right side, like his hair grows in a different pattern. And so that's something I kind of want to go over with you guys today, you know, how to recognize the pattern of hair grows so you can get that clean fade. Also, when you're cutting the hair with the grain, you always want to make sure you know exactly, you know, which way the hair grows because it's easy to come up across a part assuming like right here at the top of the head is growing straight down. But like for instance, on this hair, on this uh, top left side, this hair kind of grows in. So you got to come at it at a different angle. So if I was to come at it uh, in the same direction I was the rest of his hair, it would, it would cause a gap right in the top left of his head. So you really got to pay attention. And, uh, that's why I stress a lot that combing and brushing the hair is very important before you get into the haircut. And you want to make sure you don't rush this. Um, a big part of making the haircut look good is getting the hair to lay down perfectly. Um, a lot of times I'll use like a hot towel or like dry shampoo to help get the hair to lay down after I cut it down. And I'll show that in other videos as well. Um, now I'm going to take my uh, wall detailers. I'm just going to make my first guideline. A lot of times when I do tapers, I always start in the back. So I cut the hair down and I go to the back, I'll taper and line up the back and then I'll you know, focus the rest of my time on the, on the front of the haircut. So what about half inch up on this taper? And you can see like the, the lighter shade in his hair. That's where his hair changes directions a lot. And so I really gotta be careful when I'm tapering this out. So with my masters, I'm just starting with them all the way closed and I'm just finding the direction of his hair growth and I'm going against it. I'm just being really light-handed. You'll see a little here and a little bit in this video how light-handed I am with my clipping. Like I said, you never see my client's head bobbing around. And now I'm gonna work my way up. Um, I'm about halfway up now. And continue with just the same process. That line I put in, I'm just I'm just blending that line out. So I got that first line going. And now the little this, that second line that I made a demarcation, I'm gonna go halfway up, blend that out. Now I'm all the way up. And I'm continuing to you know, find the direction of his hair and, and bring it out. A lot of times I'm using just the corners. When I'm working in small spaces, I'm using just the corner of my blades so I can uh, knock out those dark spots. Man, if you guys haven't checked out yet, make sure you, uh, on Tuesdays, you check us out. Um, I'm live every Tuesday night, 8.30 Central Standard Time. The Hair Heroes video cast. Um, any questions you guys got, man, I'm answering all types of questions on there. So make sure you tune in if you got a question and get an answer. See what I'm doing? Same technique, clippers all the way open. Finding the direction of his hair growth. It's just building up. You know, I mean, you just work like small areas at a time. You don't have to try to taper off the whole hair back with one swipe. You know, just work small areas. And now I got my zero guard. I'm gonna close it all the way and I'm gonna continue to do the same exact technique that I just did, blending that, uh, blending that line out until I can get it, you know, to blend it to the top perfectly. Um, again, the hair on top was cut down with the number one guard with the grain. So I know that my zero guard is gonna go into that number one guard perfectly. So by the time I get up with my uh, zero guard on all the way open, that's gonna be the last guard I'm gonna have to use. I don't have to go to a number one guard to blend it into the top. 
another thing. I, I like when I fade, I fade a lot with my wrist. So you see, I got a lot of wrist action. Um, some people will fade with their arm. Um, it's really just a preference, man. Like I, I think you get softer and smoother transitions when you use more wrists compared to using more arms and putting a lot more pressure. And again, with the zero guard, I'm just working my way up. So I had it all the way closed. Now I'm about halfway open. small parts at a time taking that out. Again, don't rush it, like especially when the hair grows in all different directions. You gotta take your time so you can get a smooth transition. Cause it can be tricky. Like I said, he's a, this, is a, this is a tricky taper just because of the way his hair grows. And then continuously brushing, you know, in that, in that direction with the, the hair growth. So now after I finish my taper with my zero guard, I'm gonna go in, I'm just gonna line up the back of his neck and then, um, you know, then I'll move on to the front and I'll do, you know, I'll take care, take care of the front of the haircut. So again, just tapping and pulling away, trying to stay on that natural hairline as much as, much as possible. Um, if there is a hairline that you ever do push back, the back hairline is probably like the least noticeable where you can push it up. But I wouldn't, I would never like, <laughs> Never take it in way far. Like if you if you take it in, just go in, you know, quarter inch something like that. But you know, a lot of people whose back hairline will come like way down, and you see a lot of times people will line it up just like that. Getting personal preference, you know, whatever the client wants. You see, I just turn them around, I line them up, you know, I line up one side and I turn them around, look at them straight, and I go off the other side and get a nice even. holding his ear down, um, use like your pinky and index finger, and then you can use those T-edges, you get a, a clean lineup around the ear. And then, you know, when, once I get down, I just go in and I just, you know, just finish it off. Any little cleanup work, get those neck hairs off. Sometimes I'll do it at the end of the haircut. Um, others I'll do it like right after I finish. It just kind of depends on how I'm feeling that day. So now when we get to the side, um, we're gonna follow pretty much the same exact technique. I'm gonna do it a little different when I get to my guard, so pay attention to that. But again, got my detailers making my first guideline. Um, and you see I'm kind of like a parallel with the ear, going up straight from the tip of the ear up to the point. And again, just, just getting as clean as you possibly can. Um, sometimes, my, my detailers, they don't cut as close as my TI liners. So if I make the guy with my detailers, I'll go with my TI liners. And I'll just, you know, turn them around. And it's taking the even extra step baller. And now with my masters, I'm going to go in, uh, blades closed. I'm just going to work my blades up. So I'm going to kind of go up notch by notch on this because I want to have, this is going to help me have a little bit more control in my taper. So that way, if I go up halfway and I go up too much, I'm not taking the taper too high. So, like I said, I made my guideline all the way closed. I just tapped on that guideline, moved up my next notch, tapped on that line. You know, now I'm about halfway, and I'm just tapping that out. And again, using the corners a lot. The right side of his head is tricky, especially down right by his ear, because that's where his hair, like, it starts to grow back backwards towards his ear. And you can kind of see his wave pattern, you know, if you look up towards the, uh, more towards the middle of the head. Um, his head grows in all different directions. Which, I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not something that's really uncommon, but, you know, it's always something that you want to pay attention to. And then I work that all the way up until my clip is all the way open, which is equal to a one blade. And now you see where I got that, that weight line. I'm not even going to touch that with, without a guard. Um, now I'm just working on just blending out the rest of my, my original line that I created with my detailers. And so now I'm just playing with the lever, um, just going back and forth, you know, looking at spots, using my mirror and just taking out what I can with the, the, the fade or not the fade master, just the improvement master. Again, these aren't fade master. 
And now I got my zero guard again. Again, zero guard is the only guard I'm using. I got my clippers all the way open. So instead of working, you know, closing them and working them open, I want to stop my table right where I had that line of demarcation, or not the line of demarcation, but the line, the weight line. And so what I'm gonna do is open it all the way up and just start blending that line out. And then I'm just gonna work them close and get a smooth transition back into the bottom of this table. So now I'm about halfway down. And then again, open them up, took out that initial weight line that I created and then close them halfway. And I'm just gonna work it back down to the all the way close. So now all the way close, almost all the way close. Now I'll get down to that point. You kind of just go off feel what you think of, you know, whatever measurement you think you're gonna need. And it's always safer you start a little higher and go lower. That's always what I tell you, especially the new barbers. Start high, go low, because you can always take more off. You can't put more back on. Again, just using like the corners of my clippers. So like the last three or four blades on each side is what I'm using most of the time when I'm doing this blend. And if you got any other little weight lines or anything, you can come in um, against the grain or with the grain of the hair, and you can kind of kind of help blend them out as well. Take your time, like there's no need to rush through the process. Um, that's something I talked about uh, last week on, on my live stream, is that haircut time is something that, like with myself, has increased. I kind of went from like 30 minutes to a haircut two years ago, but now, like my haircuts are taking like 45 minutes on average, I say 40 to 45 minutes, just because I'm putting more detail and, and I'm, I'm giving better haircuts. Clients, clients don't mind. Clients don't mind sitting in the chair for 45 minutes. I think it's when you get to that point of like an hour, hour and 15 minutes is way too long, and that's when people start getting impatient. So now after I finish that, cleaning up that line, I take my uh, wall shaver and I just go in and you know just tap out or not tap out, but you know get it all the way down to the skin. This just puts the finishing touches on to make sure it's your take will pop out more. Yeah, I put all the details for all the tools I use in this video down below in the description so you guys can find them. Um, that shaver, that's probably the best shaver I actually have. So now for this lineup, I'm just taking rubbing alcohol, and you can use any type of rubbing alcohol. It's just really just drying out the hairline, cleaning it. And when you got a clean, dry hairline, that's when you get the best lineups. Um, so I'm just gonna take some rubbing alcohol, spray it on, put a little on the neck strip, you know, wipe them down, and then take my blow dryer and dry it. Sometimes I'll do it in the beginning of the haircut after I, um, you know, get my kind of hair down. I'll just go in here, you know, like if I don't feel like using the blow dryer, I'll just go in and put the alcohol on first. And then, you know, by the time I go to line them up, it'll be dry. Uh, for the video purpose, I just use the blow dryer just to speed it up. And then I got my T outliners. And I start from the corner, and I'm going to work my way towards the middle. So you see, when I'm working towards the middle, I'm not, I'm, I'm starting in the corner. And I'm just coming straight down like I'm going at a, at a slant almost. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So it's gonna kind of create a V effect in the front of his head. Because I don't wanna just come from the corner and try to come straight around because then that's gonna, that's gonna tend to cause you to get an uneven line or even possibly push the back, uh, the middle back a little bit. So I, I think the best thing to do is start from the corner and just come down at an angle on both sides and then you can go in and you can you know even that up and um, round that off a little bit more so you see like the v effect like i created right now so i didn't even touch the middle i just came down from this side came down from this side and now i'm going in and i'm just going to straighten it out and i i really only do this when it comes to clients that have more of a round hairline if I, got, if I have somebody that has a perfect hairline, a straight hairline box, I'm just gonna start in the middle and I'm gonna work my way out, you know, both ways. Uh, I, I, just, I don't see a point in starting, you know, from the corner and coming in, which you can, but I mean, you're, you're gonna run across more people that have a round hairline than a, than a perfect box hairline anyways. Again, just tapping, pulling away, being super light-handed. Um, my clippers are adjusted. Um, I got modified blades. So there's no point for me to be sitting there pressing. If I do, he's gonna come back next week. He's gonna have a whole scalp of hairline. Um, 
because I put too much pressure on I cut him, you know, so you just, like I said, with these clippers, all you do is tap and pull away, man. You see how sharp of a line I'm getting with him. Uh, there's no need to, no need to put any force into it. Again, after I finish the horizontal line, I go and I do my vertical lines. And when I do my vertical lines, I like to use the eyebrows um, as much as I can to help me get an even line. Um, like in barber school, I know they teach you to use different bones and things like that, different facial features. Sometimes on people, man, like the left side and right side of the face is different. Um, and so I, I feel like the eyebrows are probably the most consistent to line up from. And so a lot of times I use the end of the eyebrows to, to make sure, you know, um, my, that my lines are even. But again, you know, before you use any facial features, make sure you look at the person in the face and make sure everything is, is even so that way you get your hairline even. Again, same technique, tapping, pulling away, not putting a lot of pressure. I'm not putting any pressure with these actually. I'm just, you know, with that alcohol dries it out, gives you a nice clean hairline. So that makes it easier to cut already. Um, another thing is like dry shampoo. If you don't have, you know, rubbing alcohol, or everybody has rubbing alcohol, I assume, but um, dry shampoo works great as well. So now for the enhancement, once I'm done with the cut, again, don't don't ever just throw enhance my haircut to make to cover up bad work. Like, make sure the haircut's good. You don't want your client going home, washing their hair, and all of a sudden they got, their haircut's not as fresh as it was. So I'm just using Topic. Um, the color I use with Topic is dark brown. I'm actually about to discontinue using dark brown because Topic switched the colors and it, it, it looks more purplish brownish. Um, so I think we'll go back to black and start using Dr. Phil in again. But yeah, all I did, I just, just freehanded it, just sprayed it, you know, where I wanted it. And now when I go to line it up, I'm not creating a new line. My line was already set. So all I'm doing, I'm just taking my T-out liners. I think T-out liners are the best when it comes to lining up topic. I don't like using the detailers as much. I feel like you get a way better line when you use the T-out liners. So all I'm doing, I'm staying on that natural line that I already created. So once you put enhancement on, don't try to don't try to adjust the line at all. If you need to make adjustments to the hairline, take the take the enhancement off, make the adjustments, put the enhancement back on, and then you know go back in and line it up. Because then enhancement can will trick you sometimes. You can end up pushing somebody's hairline back um, to a spot where they didn't want it. So you see, all I'm doing is just tracing over you know what I, where I just sprayed that topic. Now that's doing is lining up the topic. And a lot of times I use my blade just to kind of get the excess topic off his head. So after I freehand it on there, I'll take a brush, brush it down, brush off you know the excess topic on his forehead, and I'll go in and line it up. You know whatever the brush doesn't get, you know my blade's gonna get. I'll just drag it across and take the topic off. And you see, I'm not, I'm not creating any, anything new, not doing anything different. Just staying on that same line, just tracing it, and you see the the, the crispy line I get. So I think it's the easiest uh, hair enhancement to use, I believe. But here's the final result. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for coming to spend another 20 minutes with me. Um, until the next one, that's all I got for you today. I'm out.